Hi! Today, we're going to touch on the topic juggling speed, or what I more precisely mean by that, how many catches do I do per minute while I'm juggling? It's quite easy to see that 7 balls is quite a bit faster than 3 balls. But how much faster? The way I'll gather the necessary data to look closer into this topic is the following. I'll record myself juggling 3 to 9 balls, 3 to 9 rings and also 3 to 9 clubs. I will try and juggle for 1 minute for each of the different objects and I will juggle for as long as I can when I'm not capable of doing it for the entire minute. I'll then transfer all of my video files into my editing program and then I'll start counting. I will start the timer when the first catch is made and I'll stop the timer when one minute has surpassed, not including the first catch. If I can't do the specific pattern for the entire minute, I'll again start the timer at the first catch and end the timer at the last catch. I will take the total amount of catches and divide it by the total amount of seconds. This will give me catches per second, or CPS for short. Then I'll multiply my CPS with 60 to give me the number of catches per minute, or CPM for short. I will write down all of the results and I'll repeat the same process three different times. Now I have gathered all of the necessary information. So let's see at the results I got. Here you can see how many catches I got per minute while juggling with balls, clubs and rings from 3 to 9 objects. As you can see, the speed varies from 131 catches per minute with 3 rings to 306 catches per minute with 9 balls. But how fast is really this? To illustrate this, you can imagine watching Usain Bolt sprint 100 meters as fast as he can. Here, he takes an average of 256 steps per minute which in juggling is a tiny bit faster than 6 balls and almost exact same speed as 8 rings. The first thing that I was surprised about was how similar the results were for all 3 days. From day 1 to day 2, all of my 5 object patterns only varied with plus minus 1 catch per minute. So only around 0.5% difference. My sample pattern varied from 280 catches per minute to 274 catches per minute. But my biggest difference in terms of catches was my 9 ball pattern, which varied from 300 catches per minute to 311 catches per minute. And that is probably because my 9 ball pattern isn't that solid yet. But actually, if you look at percentage more than catches, you can see that it clearly varied the most with three objects. It varied with a total of 4% difference with three clubs, 4.6% difference with balls, and a total of 5.5% different with rings. I think the reason for this is that when you juggle four objects or more, you are striving towards a correct technique in a way. But when you juggle three objects, it's, it's that easy that you can do it really relaxed without putting that much effort into it. Here, you can look at the difference when I juggle three balls compared to when I juggle five balls. You can see that with five balls, I catch and release the balls at a much higher height than I do with three. And you can also see that I enjoy five balls far more than I do with three. On this spreadsheet, you can see that balls are generally the fastest object, then comes rings, and then clubs. There are multiple reasons for this, but I think the main one is that when you have a big object to juggle, you need more space in your pattern to avoid collisions. 
So for example, hoops would be even slower than clubs. So that was kind of the irregularities I got in my results. But let's see how the speed changes when you compare low numbers to high numbers. The first thing I can see is that I always increase my speed when going from a low number to a higher number. So at least with three to nine objects, it looks like the higher amount of props equals to a higher amount of catches per minute. Another thing I saw, which was not from the spreadsheet, but the videos I recorded was that the more objects you juggle, the higher your patterns. And this was the case for me, at least with three to nine objects with all of the three different props. Also, when I go from three to nine objects, you can see that I almost double my CPM with balls. I almost double my CPM with clubs, but I get more than double the CPM with rings. The main reason why this is, is not because my four to nine rings is that fast, but it has more to do with that my three ring pattern is that slow. If we compare me doing three balls to three clubs, to three rings, we can see some big differences between the patterns. You can see that with clubs and balls, my hand movement is quite small. With clubs, I almost only use my wrists. But my technique with three rings, on the other hand, has quite a lot of motion. When I juggle four clubs and four balls, on the other hand, my hand movement is bigger than with three. And it pretty much stays the same way for more objects to come. But with rings, the hand motion with four is pretty much the same as it is with three. And that is the main reason why the jump in CPM from three rings to four rings is that big. So, because of my irregularities with three objects, I find it quite a bit more interesting to compare everything to four objects. Here you can see the increase in speed from four to nine objects for all of the three different props. And as you can see here, the speed almost increased identically in percentage. If we look at a different spreadsheet, which showcases the difference in catches per minute instead of percentage, we can see the jump in catches per minute from the previous object. For example, five balls contains 46 more catches per minute than four balls. And there are two things here that are really interesting to see. The first thing is that when I increase the amount of clubs by one, it seems that I have to add a lot of catches per minute when going from even numbers to odd numbers. But it's just a tiny difference when I go from odd numbers to even. For example, the difference in four and five clubs is really big but the difference in five to six clubs is really small. I'll give you five seconds to figure out why this is. It has to do with the rotations of the clubs, but not the rotation in itself, but the height increase that the rotation brings with it. Because when you juggle with a certain amount of rotation, in a way that forces you to juggle at a certain height. For example, when I go for one more club, but not increasing the amount of rotation, like four clubs to five clubs, the pattern will almost be at the same height, but the pattern will also include an extra club. And this will cause a huge increase in catches per minute. To showcase this, you can see how much faster a four club pattern is in singles compared to doubles. It's actually a massive 31 catches per minute difference. And remember, in all of these clips, I tried to juggle in a way that felt completely natural to me. Remember as I said about the height, it almost doesn't change when you have the same amount of rotations but one more club. But there is a difference. Here you can see me standing side by side doing four and five clubs, six 
and seven clubs. And eight and nine clubs. There is no enormous difference, but it's there. The second thing we can read of this is that it isn't only with clubs that we can see this huge jump in catches per minute when going from even numbers to odd numbers. It actually also occurs with balls and rings. If we take some time to look at this, we can see that it always increases more in the amount of catches per minute while going from even numbers to odd numbers. My theory for why this is has to do with the fundamental differences in a non-crossing fountain pattern and a crossing cascade pattern. With a fountain pattern, you have to do quite a lot of scoop, which is the term for how big of a circle you make with your hands while juggling. With cascade, you don't have to move your hands nearly as much as you do with a fountain to avoid all of the objects in the air colliding. Therefore, when you need less time to move your hands, you can act faster, and when you can act faster, you can fit more objects into the pattern. I can make this a bit easier to visualize with showing a graph. The x-axis is the amount of objects, and the y-axis is the amount of catches per minute. The blue showcases balls, the red showcases rings, and the green showcases clubs. And what you can see from looking at this graph is that all of the three different graphs kind of look like stairs, and especially clubs. So when you look at this graph, you can imagine that if I were to do a good run of 10 objects, I would most likely increase my height a bit, but my amount of catches per minute would most likely not increase that drastically. Now I have showed you all of the different results from 3 to 9 objects. But what if I juggle a higher number? I actually checked my 12 ball flash and I was quite shocked of what I found. Because when I flash 12 balls, I do a massive 431 throws per minute. This is actually 7.2 throws per second. This is really fast and not sustainable at all to maintain the pattern. And actually, even though I did 431 throws per minute, I only did 388 catches per minute. And the reason why the amount of throws per minute and catches per minute were so different here was because I threw the last ball quite a bit higher than the first ball. Of course, when you juggle a pattern for an entire minute, the amount of throws per minute and catches per minute is pretty much the same, but for flashes, they can vary quite a bit. So that's why I'll say both catches per minute and throws per minute. If we look at Alexis Barron's 13 ball flash, we get 431 throws per minute and 416 catches per minute. So here he as well throws a bit higher with the last ball than his first. But Alex's 14 ball flash got 410 throws per minute and 417 catches per minute. And that's a result of the last ball being thrown lower than the first. But look close at these numbers. 431 throws per minute with 13, but 410 with 14. He actually throws slower with 14 balls than with 13. We can already see that when we compare 3 to 9 objects, the amount of catches per minute that's increased from the previous number gets lower and lower for each added object. But here it actually decreases. Maybe this is an indicator of that at a certain point the juggling speed will probably flatten out. Then you most likely have to improve your other components of juggling, as for example the height of your throw. And with a higher throw, you need more accuracy. Luis has a great video that showcases this, so make sure that you check it out. 
Going back to Alex's parents' 14 ball flash, we can conclude with that since he threw slower with 14 than with 13, he would have to throw a lot higher with 14 than 13. And with this in mind, you might ask the question, what about 15 balls? If Alex were to throw at the same height with 15 balls as he did with 14, he would have to do 439 throws per minute. And 439 is even more than he did with 13 balls, which is also more than he did with 14. So it's quite a big increase in speed. And also, the faster you throw, the harder it is to throw accurately, and also the harder it is to throw high. So, flashing 15 balls wouldn't only need an impressive amount of coordination, but it would also require a huge amount of strength. And that's why juggling just one more ball is that challenging. The last thing I would like to show you is the current world record for 11 balls, which is also by Alex Barron. That's a new world record. <laughs> I believe this to be one of the greatest number juggling records. The reason for this is that he manages to keep the pattern going for three entire cycles at a speed of 370 catches per minute. He can keep a pattern going while throwing more than six throws per second, which is crazy. <laughs> At this speed, I struggle a lot just to catch the balls. And to catch, you only have to move your hands back and forth. If you want to make a throw like he does, you have to take your hand up and down and also side to side, which you do when you catch. And how he can do this at this enormous speed is incredible. Most jugglers struggle to do a flash at this tempo. But at this tempo, he can run it. So, what do you think? Did any of the results surprise you? If you have any questions about this video or about the results, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll happily respond. And again, thank you for watching this video.